So, good morning everyone, welcome to the, or good afternoon I should say, uh, Friday Lunchtime Friday Reflections is back again. Um, so, to, we're just going to look at anything that's happened throughout the week, not a lot's gone on. Um, could take a quick look at Steve Bruce's comments today and look ahead at this titanic, colossal, gargantuan must win game against Brighton and Hove Albion at the Annex Stadium Saturday night. So, first of all, any there's no fresh injury concerns, which is good. Um, you've seen on Instagram and I've seen it all over Twitter as well. Alan Samaxaman looking pretty fresh and sprightly on his uh, his home treadmill, um, training in, in like a, a, a Newcastle goalkeeper top <laughs> looked like, but he, he, he's, he's running. He looks he looked comfortable running. You often see people obviously when they're running and they got a little niggle. You can tell it's obvious. They're awkward, lumbering a little bit and just look a bit stiff. But he, he was only jogging. You know we can't read too much into a quick clip of someone jogging on the treadmill. But he looked comfortable. He didn't look in any discomfort whatsoever. So that's a big positive. Hopefully, obviously the sooner he comes back. And the sooner uh, Callum Wilson comes back, the better. Uh, and obviously, Miggie Elmron, but I, I believe in these closing stages of the season, Callum Wilson and Alan Samaxman will be, if they're back, fit firing, I think we'll be fine. Well, I say fine, I, I think we will survive uh, with change. Um, I did hear a couple of weeks ago that Callum Wilson was looking, uh, targeting the Brighton game as the game he was going to be first available for selection obviously I'm assuming that was meant to be thought of as a substitute appearance and not available for selection from the start in the in the first 11 however I've heard nothing new about that whether anything will come out this afternoon or tomorrow morning I doubt you know obviously Newcastle's best player top goal scorer and only as of now proper proven Premier League standard striker um, if there was going to be any news about it, it, an early return, I'm sure you would have heard about it throughout this week. There would have been a buzz about the club and a buzz about Callum Wilson on social media. As of yet, nothing new. So, no new injuries. I haven't heard anything much on uh, Miggy Almiron. So, Brighton. Now, Brighton were looking like very similar to us. They were sliding down the table being dragged into it then last weekend obviously they picked up a huge result against Southampton now if they had beaten it it's almost it's almost irrelevant really because we we wanted Brighton to lose you know because if we'd if Brighton lost we would be I believe two I don't know we I think we'd be um one point ahead of them because as it happened we drew for the third successive game um, a fantastic chance to uh, to put the you know to, to grab and steal all three points that uh, um, we essentially blew it um, but anyway it's a new week it's a new day it's a new round of the Barclay Premier League so Brighton like I said they picked up a huge win against Southampton uh, I was a little bit miffed because Southampton have been struggling of late and they were I think top top six when um, they convincingly dealt with us at St Mary's back in November I want to say um, they were looking like a really good side and they've got one of the best um, you, you see there's a lot of clamour on social media on the radio talk sports sky sports etc talking about the, the wealth the wealth of um, talent Gareth Southgate has available to him for the Euros, but I think uh, James Ward-Prowse is a supreme footballer. He's incredibly impressive. His free kicks, obviously, it's the first thing you think of, but his free kick technique is so good. He's a great passer of the ball. He, he, he's a great leader in the midfield. So, yeah, you look at, you know, players like that, Southampton have got, you know, obviously, Danny Ings has been hasn't been uh, available recently but you expected I I hoped slash expected Southampton to deal with Brighton because Brighton obviously they were unlucky against West Brom 
you know, they, they play lovely football at times and everyone's saying, oh, you know, that they deserve to stay up purely because of the football they play. Well, maybe that's right, but, you know, at the end of the day, the league table, come 38 games, doesn't give a shit about what kind of football you play in terms of your style, how good it is to watch. It's all about getting results and being effective, which we are neither of those things at the minute. But that was a bit of a surprise to me. Um, if Brighton were going to beat anyone, I would have loved to the, for them to have beaten Fulham. Because that was Fulham they beat last weekend. Or Burnley, because I think Southampton, Southampton could get dragged into it. But for the short term, they were just out of range to, for it to be of any real benefit to us. So, obviously City did us a favour and, as you'd expect, dealt with Fulham fairly easily. Like they're dealing with most teams fairly easily, to be fair. And we just didn't capitalise, you know. The third game on the trot now, you know, Wolves, obviously I thought we played well. And we were unfortunate not to win. Obviously you think of that Joe Linton chance. You think of the, the cock-up in conceding the goal was unbelievable. Then against West Brom, I don't think we can have any complaints because we didn't go there to win the game. Regardless of what Steve Bruce or any of the players say, that, that we went there just to not lose. You know, it's, it's, you know, the teams down the bottom are really difficult to play. They're fighting for their lives. Well, we should have that fucking mindset as well. It's it's the, the pomposity and the arrogance of Steve Bruce's sort of attitude towards the teams below us is fucking it's, it's mind-boggling. You know, like, he's confident that the teams below us will fall away. And, you know, he's just gone. He's given West Brom the arrogance to sort of turn back on itself because he's given West Brom far too much respect. You know, thinking that we're this, this mid-table team who's got nothing to play for and we should be worried about West Brom because they're scrapping. You know, we should be scrapping too. Besides the point, but we should have won that game. West Brom didn't cause us any problems. If Joe Linton has a bit more confidence, I believe he shoots and probably scores from that angle. By the by, um, then who was the most recent one? Aston Villa. Again, Joe Linton. As a running theme here. But yeah, Aston Villa, obviously it, it was an unfortunate own goal. We grabbed the late equaliser, Jamal the South, big up the captain, doing bits. Jacob Murphy at 0 0 should have smashed that into the top corner. Um, I've seen quite a few people, not many, but a few give Jacob Murphy some hate over that. But I think overall people realised if he didn't come on, we weren't going to score a goal fucking night. Because he came on. All right, he should have scored. He should have scored, and you'd like to think Villa wouldn't have come back from that. But he should have scored. But then again, he gave us that, he made such an impact. He gave us attacking impetus. He took responsibility, and he, he grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck and ultimately provided the assist. He should have been good for two goals. He just got us the one. But yeah, there's three games there where you sort of think, this is what's sealing our fate because we're... We're having the opportunities to, to score goals and win games. Where Wolves, okay, Wolves haven't been anywhere near this season what they were last season or the season before. But they they didn't play great. West Brom, like I said, could have could have been at us all fucking all day and they wouldn't have scored a bloody goal. Um, and then Aston Villa, a far cry from what they've been recently. Uh, particularly the sort of the first three four months of the season they didn't have Jack Grealish they had an injury early on they didn't really play well you know they didn't play anywhere near like they did when they dealt with us comfortably 2-0 at their place so there's three games where we, we, we've let an opportunity slip we let the opportunity slip but we go again against Brighton now I was having a little think about this yesterday what team do you pick because um, Steve Bruce very publicly and surprisingly said that the West Brom game wasn't a must win um, the only playing devil's avocado here the only way I could the only trail of thought I could think that he's clinging on to was the fact that there was a sizable gap between us and West Brom now Brighton and Hove Albion are I believe one point above us so they are you know do you know what I mean? That there was a decent amount of points, a shed load of points in between us and West Brom, along with Fulham in between us and Brom, and I believe Brighton at the time. 
Whereas now, Brighton are our, are our direct competitors to stay in the Premier League. We need to drag them down with us and we need to drag them below us and then keep our foot, feet on their throat throughout the rest of the season. You know, I am confident if we keep Brighton below us, we will stay in the Premier League. Because let's be honest, Sheffield United are gone. West Brom, I've got a little sliver of a chance, but it's eroding fast. Um, I can see Fulham, obviously, climbing out the bottom three. I don't think West Brom will. I think West Brom have had it. They don't. They just don't have enough quality in, in their squad, unfortunately, for that. Um, so, yeah, Sheffield United, West Brom. Then, like I said, I can see Fulham scraping out of it because Fulham have got momentum. And people say, oh, they got dicked by Man City. Well, yeah, but who doesn't get dicked by Man City? You know, Scott Parker would have looked at that and said, he wouldn't have said this in his team talk because he's far too good a motivator and he believes in his squad. But he would have been thinking, him and his coaches privately thinking, right, well, it's a free hit today. You know, we're not expecting anything. If we get a draw, fantastic. If we get a win, have a fucking do you. Do you know what I mean? It, 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 was, it was a free hit. And I, I would think the same thing if I was the... If Newcastle are in that position, um, is Man City are just an absolute force at the moment. However, so yeah, Man City, however, did the job, did it professionally, got some good points from your fantasy team. But this game, so like I said, that, that's the only trail of thought I could see that Steve Bruce was clinging to was there was a numerical a sizable numerical points difference between us and West Brom and there was Fulham sort of bolstering between us. Now, like I say, they are our direct competitors. I believe Fulham play lunchtime tomorrow, so we could be in the bottom three by the time we play Brighton. Brighton have, they're in better, a lot better form than us in terms of they won the last game against Southampton. The last game we won was against Southampton and that was a while ago now. You look back, that 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 was quite. A, that was three draws and two losses ago. So five games, more than a month. Um, Brighton play better football. They play with a more, it, regardless of form, right? If you're down in that pressure cooker of the relegation zone or in and around it, right? If you play like we do, set up to defend, it's just you're just running. It just feels like you're running scared all the time. You're, you're not getting all right. Some some teams just pass the ball out around for the sake of it. And Barcelona, one of the most successful teams of the last 15 years, should we say? At times, I've watched Barcelona, people creaming over them, and I thought they're literally just passing around for the sake of it, you know. Like, and it's just like, oh my god, it's amazing in La Liga when teams sort of go at them, but you know. When you're passing the, when you have possession of the ball, and you're passing it forward and trying to get at teams, you're causing problems, and your morale within that game, your belief within that game is going to lift. You could be the most robust unit, and but if, like we can be in terms of defensively, but because we're down in that relegation zone, in that relegation problem, in the relegation pot, you know we're giving up possession to teams just letting them come at us we're handing them the imputer straight away we're handing them the keys to the car straight away we're handing them control but we're taking the game out of our hands and passing it on which is what is the most worrying thing for me you know if we went down um, but we fought all the way and we give it a right could go you, you'd be heartbroken but you think well it's just the way it goes you know it's poor poor by the manager for the majority of the season but at least they give it a go and it was in their hands the last thing you want is to be relegated and it's out of your hands because you've been that crap and you've just handed over control so just gonna have a quick look what I, the team I think he will play versus the team I would like them to play so recent games suggest we will go for that narrow four three one two formation or the four three three now Neither, against Brom, neither worked really because they were both, <laughs> it's amazing, you play a 4-3-1-2, right, and you think, right, that's a narrow midfield, and you've got your two strikers up top, so you're going to need 
you think that's okay because you, your full backs can bomb on and provide width and then um, a couple of your sitting midfielders can just sort of disperse back and cover for them i.e. a uh, say if Emil Kraft got up the right um, Isaac Hayden could fill in at right back or just tuck over that side but we're playing the 4-3-1-2 a narrow midfield formation with Emil Kraft who cannot get forward and cannot attack and then Paul Dummett, who can put in a decent ball like he did against Brom, uh, Villa. But his game is defending, and you can't have a go at him for that because he is he's a centre-back, really. He's a defensive left-back, and he's very good at good at that. Whereas Kraft, he's a defensive right-back. He's, yeah. But anyway, so I'm expecting the 4-3-1-2. Um, I, I can't see him going 4-3-3 with Dwight Gale on the wing again because that just did not work. So I probably expect him to go Dubravka, Dummett, Clark and Lascelles pick themselves at the minute. They're just brilliant. Re I've been really, really impressed with them. Um, Jamal looks back to sort of dominating best, fighting in the air, um, big tackles, you know, scrapping leadership. Clark is just, his positional play and awareness is it, it, it's quite impressive to watch. Um, I think Kraft will start a right back. So there you go, you've got your uber defensive, arguably four centre backs across the back line. 4 3 1 2. So I think you will see uh, Hendrick, Hayden, Shelby, Joe Willock ahead of them, and then Joe Linton and Fraser. Yeah. Now, well, I've sort of cobbled that together and made that up on the spot, but if you look into what I think the team should be, I would bring up, we need to go for it. So I would bring in, bring back Jamal Lewis. I'd go for a 4 2 3 1, which is what we've been screaming for all season. But I'd bring back Jamal Lewis. Paul Dummett done nothing wrong. We just need someone with a bit more zip. Jamal Lewis, I would have um, Clark and Lasalle, like I said, pick themselves. I'd have Javier Menchio, because I think he's more capable of delivering a decent cross. I'd have Hayden. Shelby, I don't really want to pick Shelby because he's been inconsistent, but I'd love to say I would play Matty and Sean, but I'm trying to go semi-realistic here, and that's not going to happen for some fucking weird reason. Um, I did see The Athletic have done a good, very good article on Matty Longstaff that is worth checking out if you haven't read it already. Um, very good very intriguing, mystifying. So, I would go for, like I said, John Joe and Isaac in the Sancho defensive midfield roles. Um, I'm just going to have to pause it there for a minute because I have to go in the gate at work. Right then, sorry about that. Yeah, so uh, Hayden and John Joe in the central defensive midfield roles. I would then go for uh, Joe Willock in sort of the number 10, the attacking midfield role. I'd have Jacob Murphy off the left and uh, Ryan Fraser, uh, Jacob Murphy off the right, Ryan Fraser off the left, sorry. And then I'd have Dwight Gale up top. Or you could do the same formation but maybe drop um, Willock, have Fraser in the number 10, have uh, Matt Ritchie wide left, Jacob Murphy wide right, get even more balls in the box and play Andy Carroll. Um, I think that's doable because Andy Carroll is obviously immobile. However, you have a very quick mobile um, player in Ryan Fraser in and around him, running beyond him, supporting him, all that sort of thing. Or you could even go the 4-4-2 with John Joe, Isaac in the midfield, uh, Murphy on the right, either Fraser or Richie on the left, and then Gail and Carroll up top. I think that is a viable option. Um, I'm talking about Matt Ritchie like there's a chance he'll play. I don't think you'll see Matt Ritchie in a Newcastle shirt um, for the rest of the season, arguably ever again, um, which is, is, is sad to say. I certainly don't think he'll start another game for Newcastle. Um, for the rest of the season, maybe next season if another manager comes in.
who knows? Um, but yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see. Brighton, like I said, they play better football than us. We need to take it to them. Um, make it ugly when we need to make it ugly. Yeah, be progressive and go for it. Um, Jacob Murphy needs to start. He completely changed the game against Villa. His enthusiasm and energy and accountability on the ball. That We haven't got another player like it at the moment. Um, I think it also takes a little bit of pressure off Ryan Fraser because he's that out of our sort of attacking four who everyone would fantasise about at the start of the season. Fraser, Almiron, ASM, Wilson. He's the only one fit at the minute. He's the only flair, true flair player we've got who's been starting recently. So I think if you start um, Murphy as well, it takes just takes a bit of pressure off Fraser. It really, really does. And then we hopefully we can see see the best of him. But yeah, it's going to be intriguing. Um, it's going to be nerve-wracking. Um, first goal scorer, I'm going to go with... I reckon Joe Willett's going to score again. Um, but yeah, yeah it, it'll be good if we can... Just a resound... And I don't... I say I don't want to win 1-0 and 2-1 and scrape it. Of course we do. We need the points on the board. But you just want to see a real solid performance and just push Brighton back down and just a solid performance showing them, yes, we are better than you guys. We are better than you guys. Um, so we shall see what happens. There's nothing more to say. Uh, Steve Bruce's comments. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, I knew that there was more to say. He's basically said in the media, he, he's owned up for once now, saying that um, the results haven't been good enough and they haven't won the games and he, he's, he's taken some responsibility for that. Asked again, will you walk away from the club if they drop into the relegation zone? He said, I will not give up. Same old thing, shit, up for the challenge, Malarkey. But he's insisted that that will be in the hands of Mike Ashley and Lee Charney. So I would suggest that if we lose against Brighton and go in the bottom three, I think they will sack him. I think he's pretty much been told that. I think he's been told, look, you need to front up in the media and take some of this flack. However, we shall see what happens. Um, I would rather, and this might not be a popular opinion, but I would rather we finish, stay up with Steve Bruce. In, man, in, in charge, just limp to the fucking summer than go down and have a new manager because I think what is worse for this team, relegation or continued Steve Bruce, I think relegation is worse. I, I, I don't think we can recover from another relegation. I certainly don't think we bounce straight back up, but this game's still to play. We haven't given up yet. That platoon, come on.